Hey guys, welcome back to Econ Class. Today we are covering a FRQ question from the 2016 micro exam. This is a number two question. It was worth about seven points. This is almost exclusively from unit one. It deals almost exclusively with marginal analysis and consumer choice. There is one little question about consumer surplus in there. All right, so Martha has a fixed budget of $20 and she spends it all on two goods, X and Y. The price of X is $4 per unit and the price of Y is $2 per unit. The table below shows the total benefit measured in dollars Martha receives from the consumption of each good. So we're not dealing with the utils on this one. The benefit is measured in dollars. All right, so what is Mar Martha's marginal benefit of the fifth unit of good X? So real quick and easy, but we need to establish what the marginal utility is. Remember, on these types of questions, you always look at what the labels are for the table. In this case, we've got total benefit, not marginal benefit. So we need to calculate marginal. So our marginal benefit here, just the change in total benefit as we go down, 16, 12, 8, 4, and 1. And then marginal benefit for Y, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. All right. Hopefully you're understanding that part. If not, you might want to check out my marginal analysis video. So in this case, we are looking for the fifth good of uh, fifth unit of good X. And in this case, it provided $1 worth of marginal utility. Now for part B, calculate the total consumer surplus. If Martha consumes five units of good X, show your work. Key part, show your work. Now in this case, fairly simple. Consumer surplus is calculated by taking the satisfaction somebody receives from the goods they buy, subtracting the price from it. So in this case, she's getting $41 worth of satisfaction for those five goods, and she only pays $4 a piece for all five of them, so she's only paying $20. So her total consumer surplus in this situation is $21, and we've showed our math. All right, now on to question C. Now in this case, question D is a much longer question to answer. We have to do a lot more work. And question C isn't too bad, but I wanna flip-flop these for explanation purposes. So let's start with D. What is Martha's optimal combination of goods X and Y? In this case, we need to figure out what the per dollar marginal utility is for both goods X and Y. We're going to find X by dividing by $4 because that's what each unit costs. And we come up with these numbers. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So then we're going to jump over to Y and we're going to find the per dollar margin utility for each one of these. We're going to divide these each by 2 to get the per dollar margin utility. And we come up with those numbers. So what is Martha's optimal combination? Now notice this is a nice easy question because it doesn't ask you to explain it. So it gets rid of that wordy stuff. The previous question does have you explain it, however. Now, um, we are going to spend our $20. We have to exhaust all of this. The first unit that I'm going to buy is good Y for $5 margin utility per dollar spent. Then I'm going to buy another unit good Y. And then I'm going to jump and go buy one good X, another good X, uh, another good Y. I'm still balancing it out $3 a piece, but I have six more dollars to spend. So let's grab another unit of Y and then finally another unit of good X. Here we've spent $20, we have exhausted our income, and the last, or the marginal utility per dollar spent of the last unit of good X equals that of good Y. So in this case, the optimal combination of goods is three units of good X and four units of good Y. Now, let's jump back to see and explain why this is not the optimal combination, because we know what the optimal combination is. Four units of good X, four units of good Y, three units of good X. So let's see why this one is not. In this case, we are buying four units of X and two units of Y. If this is the case, it's not hard to figure out why it's not, but explaining it's a little bit more in depth. So what you need, and this is the key part of this question, the combination of X and Y is not optimal because the margin utility per dollar spent of X is less than the margin utility per dollar spent of Y for the last purchase of each good. Or if you want to throw the actual calculations in there, 4 divided by 4 is less than 8 divided by 2. Make sure you have that one way or the other. You have to state that the last, the marginal utility per dollar spent of the last unit of each good does not equal each other. And having one less than the other is even better. Let's move on to E. Now in this one, we're running through three different scenarios, each one changing the outcome slightly. And it, it's asking us, What's going to happen to the optimal quantity of good Y? Is it going to increase, decrease, or stay the same? So we're going to throw what we originally had down here, back from you know part D, three units of good X, four units of good Y. 
and kind of go through each scenario. The price of good Y doubles. All right, so let's change our price on good Y and we're also gonna change our margin utility per dollar spent. In this case, we just cut our margin utility per dollar spent in half. So we are obviously going to be buying less of Y in this situation, but if we spend our $20, this is the way it ends up, three units of good X, two units of good Y. Okay, so answer here for part I, optimal quantity of good Y decreases. All right, next one. Martha's income falls to $10 with no changes in prices. So she just has less money. This is another obvious one. You have half the money that you did before, you're going to be spending less on both goods in most situations. There are some exceptions to that, but in this case, losing that much income is going to drop it. But let's see how. All right, with $10, this is all I can afford to spend. So I'm buying less Y. I was buying four, now I'm only buying three. And this one's, a, it's kind of a confusing one because you can't even match up the, the marginal utility per dollar spent for the last unit of each good. But either way, we are buying less Y. So one unit of good X, three units of good Y, optimal quantity of good Y decreases. That's our part two. Now the third one, Martha's income doubles and the price of both goods double. Now in this case, when you have a proportional um, increase in income and the price of the goods of both goods, it's gonna stay exactly the same, but I wanna run through and just explain why. So everything's gonna double here. We're gonna change our $2 good Y to $4, cut those marginal utilities in half, and per dollar spent in half, and then we're gonna take our $4 good X, up that to $8, and then our marginal utility per dollar spent is also gonna get cut in half over there. So we're spending twice as much money on goods that cost twice as much. We are gonna buy the exact same amount as we did in the original optimal quantity that we had. So in this case, we're buying three units of good X, four units of good Y, and the answer is that the optimal quantity of good Y stays the same. And that finishes up that question. Seven points. Now the only issues with these questions is if you have too much written all over the place or you get confused on where you're at, so make sure you keep your work neat on this. Use all the pages. They give you plenty of pages on the AP exam. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you had any problems with consumer choice, make sure you take a look at my consumer choice video. And as always, take a look at my other FRQ practices. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care.